Senator. Uh, Gwen, I hope we'll get back to education because I don't know any government program that John is supporting, not early education, more money for it. The reason No Child Left Behind was left behind was the money was left behind. We didn't fund it. But we can get back to that, I assume. Um, with regard to the role of the Vice President, I had a long talk, as I'm sure the Governor did uh, with her principal, in my case with Barack. And uh, let me tell you what Barack asked me to do. I have a history of getting things done in the United States Senate. John McCain would acknowledge that. My record shows that on controversial issues. I would be the point person for the legislative initiatives in the United States Congress for our administration. Uh, I would also, uh, when asked if I wanted a portfolio, my response was no. But Barack Obama indicated to me he wanted me with him to help him govern. So every major decision he'll be making, I'll be sitting in the room to give him my best advice. He's president, not me. I'll give my best advice. And one of the things he said early on when he was choosing, he said he'd pick someone who had an independent judgment and wouldn't be afraid to tell him if he disagreed. That is sort of my reputation, as you know. So uh, I, I look forward to working with Barack and playing a, uh, a very uh, constructive role in his presidency, bringing about the kind of change this country needs. Governor, you mentioned a moment ago that the Constitution might give the vice president more power mm -hmm. than it has in the past. Do you believe, as Vice President Cheney does, that the executive branch does not hold complete sway over the office of the vice presidency? That is, it is also a member of the legislative branch? Well, our founding fathers were very wise there in allowing through the Constitution much flexibility there in the office of the vice president. And we will do what is best for the American people in tapping into that position and ushering in an agenda that is supportive and cooperative with the president's agenda in that position. Um, yeah, so I, I do uh, agree with him that we have a lot of flexibility in there and we'll do what we have to do to uh, administer very appropriately the plans that are needed for this nation. And it is my executive experience that is partly to uh, be attributed to my pick as VP with, with um, McCain, not only as a governor, but earlier on as a mayor, as an oil and gas regulator, as a business owner. It is those years of experience on an executive level that will be put to good use in the White House also. Vice President Cheney interpretation of the Vice President? Vice President Cheney has been the most dangerous Vice President we've had probably in American history. Uh, he has, he has the idea he doesn't realize that Article One of the Constitution defines the role of the Vice President of the United States. That's the executive. He works in the executive branch. He should understand that. Everyone should understand that. And the primary role of the Vice President of the United States of America is to support the President of the United States of America, give that President his or her best judgment when sought and as the Vice President to preside over the Senate only in a time when in fact there's a tie vote. The Constitution explicit. The only authority the vice president has from a legislative standpoint is to vote. Only when there is a tie vote. He has no authority relative to the Congress. The idea he's part of the legislative branch is a bizarre notion invented by Cheney to aggrandize the power of a unitary executive and look where it's gotten us. It has been very dangerous. Let's talk conventional wisdom for a moment. The conventional wisdom, Governor Palin, with you is that your Achilles heel is that you lack experience. Your conventional wisdom uh, uh, against, uh, uh, against you is that your Achilles heel is that you lack discipline, Senator Biden. What is it really for you, Governor Palin, and what is it really for you, Senator Biden? Start with you, Governor. Uh, my experience as an executive will be put to good use as a mayor and business owner and oil and gas regulator and then as governor of a huge state, a huge energy producing state uh, that is accounting for uh, much progress towards getting our nation energy independence and that's extremely important. But it wasn't just that experience tapped into, it was my connection to the heartland of America. Being a mom, being uh, one who is very concerned about a son in the war, about a special needs child about kids heading off to college, how are we going to pay those tuition bills, about times in Todd and, and our marriage in our past where we didn't have health insurance and we know what other Americans are going through as they sit around the kitchen table and try to figure out how are they going to pay out of pocket for health care. We've been there also, so that connection was important. But even more important is that worldview that I share with John McCain 
that worldview that says that America is a nation of exceptionalism, and we are to be that shining city on a hill, as President Reagan so beautifully said, that we are a beacon of hope and that we are unapologetic here. We are not perfect as a nation, but together we represent a perfect ideal, and that is democracy and tolerance and freedom and equal rights, those things that we stand for, that we can be put to good use as a force for good in this world. John McCain and I share that, and you combine all that with being a team with the only track record of making a really a difference in where we've been and reforming, and that's a good team. It's a good ticket. Senator. You've been very kind, suggesting my only Achilles heel is my lack of discipline. Mm -hmm. Others talk about it, my excessive passion. I'm not going to change. Uh, I have 35 uh, years in public office. People can judge who I am. I haven't changed in that time. And by the way, a record of change. I will place my record and Barack's record against John McCain's or anyone else in terms of fundamental accomplishments. Wrote the crime bill, put 100,000 cops in the street. Wrote the Violence Against Women Act, which John McCain voted against both of them. Uh, was the the catalyst to change the circumstance in Bosnia, led by President Clinton, obviously. Look, I understand what it's like to be a single parent. When my wife and daughter died and my two sons were gravely injured, I understand what it's like as a parent to wonder what it's like if your kid's going to make it. I understand what it's like to sit around the kitchen table with a father who says, I got to leave, champ, because there's no jobs here. I got to head down to Wilmington, and when we get enough money, honey, we'll bring you down. I understand what it's like. I'm much better off than almost all Americans now. I get a good salary as the United States Senate. I live in a beautiful house. It's my total investment that I have. So I, I am much better off now. Now, but the notion that somehow, because I'm a man, I don't know what it's like to raise two kids alone. I don't know what it's like to have a child you're not sure is going gonna, is gonna to make it. I understand. I understand as well as, with all due respect, the governor or anybody else, what it's like for those people sitting around that kitchen table. And guess what? They're looking for help. They're looking for help. They're not looking for more of the same. Governor. People aren't looking for more of the same. They are looking for change. And John McCain has been the consummate maverick in the Senate over all these years. He's taken shots left and right from the other party and from within his own party because he's had to take on his own party when the time was right, when he recognized it was time to put partisanship aside and just do what was right for the American people. That's what I've done as governor also, take on my own party when I had to and work with both sides of the aisle in my cabinet appointing uh, those who would serve regardless of party, Democrats, independents, Republicans, whatever it took to get the job done. Uh, also, John McCain's maverick uh, position that he's in, that's uh, really prompted up to and indicated by the supporters that he has. Look at Lieberman and Giuliani and uh, Romney and Lingle and all of us who come from such a diverse background of, of policy and of partisanship, all coming together at this time recognizing he is the man that we need to leave in, lead in these next four years because these are tumultuous times. We have got to win the wars. We have got to get our economy back on track. We have got to not allow the greed and corruption on Wall Street anymore. And we have not got to allow the partisanship that has really been entrenched in Washington, D.C., no matter who who's been in charge. When the Republicans were in charge, I didn't see a whole lot of progress there either. When the Democrats either, though, this last go around for the last two years, change is coming and John McCain is the leader of that reform. I'll be very brief. Can I respond to that? Look, Please. the maverick, let's talk about the maverick John McCain is. And again, I love him. He's been a maverick on some issues, but he has been no maverick on the things that matter to people's lives. He voted four to five times for George Bush's budget, which put us a half a trillion dollars in debt this year and over three trillion dollars in debt since he's got there. He has not been a maverick in providing health care for people. He has voted against, he voted against including another 3.6 million children in coverage that, uh, of the existing health care plan when he voted in the United States Senate. He's not been a maverick when it comes to education. He has not supported tax cuts and significant changes for people being able to send their kids to college. He's not been a maverick on the war. He's not been a maverick on virtually anything that generally affects the things that people really talk about around their kitchen table. Can we send can we get mom's MRI? Can we send Mary back to school next semester? We can't, we can't make it. How are we going to heat the, heat the house this winter? He voted against even providing for what they call LIHEAP, for assistance to people with oil prices going through the roof in the winter. So maverick he is not on the important critical issues that affect people at that kitchen table. 